It's that time again. It's time for the cinematic shuffle. And uh, in case you forgot what that is, it's a series on my channel where I let fate decide what I'm going to review next, completely based off of almost 800 written reviews that I wrote on my website years and years and years ago, and I had yet to revisit them with my current format. So today I spun that randomizing wheel and I watched it turn and turn until it gave me my current film, Red Lights. Honestly, when I was building this list, I thought I was going to have to wait years to rewatch this. But when it popped up, I was, I was a happy camper. Red Lights is ultimately about a group of psychic skeptics who go around kind of like Ed and Lorraine Warren, investigating claims of the paranormal, of the psychic, of the superpowered, and their only claim is to scientifically explain how these odd, unexplainable things are actually explainable after all, and how most of them are fraudulent. In this journey, they run into Simon Silver, a self-proclaimed psychic who turns out to be a little bit harder to debunk than some of their other cases. And the harder that they try, the more crazed they become. Before I go on with this review, make sure that you stick around for the end when I reveal what my next randomly selected film review is going to be. And you won't want to miss that one. Now on with the review. Before I had my website, Dave Examines Movies, the name of that website became Dave Examines Movies based off of my title, Movie Examiner, on a different website that actually paid me to write reviews. My original review for Red Lights was way, way, way back when I was a movie examiner for that old, old, old website that no longer exists, so I couldn't even find my review for this. All I had to go off of was the fact that I remember really enjoying it. So when I started researching it and looking at movie websites like IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes, I was shocked to find almost everybody hates it. On Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a score of like 30 something percent on uh, IMDb, similar. I've had friends that have reviewed it on stuff like Letterboxd and yeah, nobody has anything good to say about it and I'm shocked, I'm appalled because both times that I've watched it, I've been super, super engaged and thought it was insanely brilliant. First, look at the casting. You got Killian Murphy, you got Robert De Niro, you got Sigourney Weaver, you got Elizabeth Olsen in one of her earliest roles, you got Toby Jones, you got, you got so many wonderfully memorable actors in this film. Like, you just look at the cast and you're like, I have to watch this movie. Because any one of them, any one of them, you'd be like, that is a good enough actor to choose to watch one of their movies on their own, but just them all together, for one thing, how can you not? And they all do a really, really great job in different ways. Sigourney Weaver does such a remarkable job with the dialogue in this film because she's kind of a scientist. So the way that she explains away some of the phenomena is brilliant. Killian Murphy has always had a way about him that screams crazy. Not crazy in a way, but more crazy in a passionate way. And the same applies here. Uh, when I think of Killian Murphy, there's two movies that come to mind, and they both start with red. Red Eye and Red Lights. Robert De Niro plays the mysterious character in this film, the self-proclaimed psychic. He's most likely inspired by the real-life self-proclaimed psychic Uri Geller, who can bend the spoon or whatever, because Robert De Niro's character does the same thing. Uri Geller, Yuri Geller, not exactly sure how you say his name. He was also met with a lot of skepticism and, and things of the nature. So the two were pretty similar in that way, but this is a lot more fictionalized and a lot more crazy. I think that most people agree that the first half of this film is great. The first half of the film focuses on the myth busting, I guess you could say, as far as the skepticism goes and explaining away phenomena and it's, it gets really, really scientific about it. The second half of the movie focuses on Killian Murphy more than anybody else as he kind of loses his mind being obsessed over Robert De Niro's character and trying to figure him out. For some reason or another, when people say that they don't like this movie, a lot of it is based off of the second half of the film, and not only that, but they also hate the twist ending, because some people say it's like a sixth sense type of ending and it doesn't make sense with the rest of the movie. I disagree. I think you just kind of have to think about it a little bit more, and when you think about it, 
it starts to make sense and it starts to feel a little bit brilliant at the same time. It's definitely something that you have to give another chance. It's definitely something that you have to think about a little bit more because never once does the film really stoop low to explain everything to the audience. It kind of expects them to think for themselves. And personally, I've never had a problem with that twist ending. I, I've always thought it was really smart and really cool. The audience watching at home is also trying to decipher, is this Robert De Niro character, Simon Silver, is he actually psychic? Is he a fraud? And throughout the film, it gives you plenty of reasons to believe either option. Is there an answer to this? I won't tell ya, you have to see for yourself. And it's definitely a movie that I recommend. Cause overall, it's a film that's made well. You can't really deny that. Some really good editing choices, some very subtle but yet very good cinematography. The performances are really good. The mystery is on point. I could see people feeling a little bit like eh once the second half comes around because it does take a pretty hefty shift in tone and feel because it was all sciency and explanations and blah, 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 blah. And then it was just a bunch of crazy things, which wasn't exactly like the first half. I get it, I get it, but I do like it that way. Let's quickly talk about my end score for Red Lights, which I scored an A letter grade, 90%, 90 out of 100 possible stars, which for me just means that this film was very, very, very entertaining, very well made. Overall, to me, it was a spectacle and uh, definitely a movie I wouldn't mind owning, definitely a movie I wouldn't mind re-watching and talking to others about. Uh, it's, it's a discussion-worthy film, I think. But what did you guys think about it? If you have seen it, please let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. And as for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And now it's time to find out what my next randomly selected film review is going to be. Yeah, that's right. I, I've never reviewed the Lord of the Rings series on my channel before, and I guess, I guess that changes tomorrow. Until then, peace out.